let us try to understand the data this data can has five columns year movie director language and notes notes section contains all the awards received or nominated for the ARMR and this sheet contains only the list up to the year of 1999 and we have separate sheet for every decade also we have a separate sheet for soundtracks and this sheet provides you all the data about the dub movies then we have a separate sheet for ARMR contribution as singer and then a separate sheet for individual albums then another sheet for music videos and then we have a separate sheet for ad jingles and also we have a separate sheet for sales now we are going to feed all this data into <laughs> Okay, in this video, we are going to import the data from Excel files. So here I have four Excel files that contains the data in decades. So I start with 1990s. So that opens up a pop-up for me and then I click on transform data. That takes me to the Power Query Editor. So from Power Query Editor itself, I start importing the other files one after the other. We can do this in a slightly different way by, by placing them all under one single folder but I don't want to complicate things for this tutorial particularly. So I am importing files from three, I mean all, all four decades. So let me import the last one, 20, 20s. And then now we have four tables in Power Query. Now we are going to give 11 names for these four tables similar to 1990s then 2000s and then 2010 and 2020s so if you look into the table structure of all these four files or four tables they are more or less similar they contain the same five columns across all the four tables right now the next step that we are going to perform is we have to append all the four tables because it, we don't need to apply separate transformation on them. Uh, so append queries is new and after append queries is new, select three or more tables and select all the tables that you need to append. Just select them all and then click OK. So that creates a new query with complete data I mean all the appendant data in the new query I just verify if all the files are appended in sequence because we should not lose the sequence Bec um, if you look into the transformation that we are going to apply you will understand how important the sequence is now give a pro appropriate name for this I am giving the name as albums for this new query now click on this year column go to transform and then fill down so once I click fill down all the null values are replaced with the previous values same uh, I do for film and director and language so for all the columns I am going to apply fill down now you can see I have four entries for the movie Roja uh, and then I have plenty of entries for Jodha Akbar number of entries for Guru etc so each entry or the movie has multiple entries because of the number of awards so the only unique so uh, if you look into the first four columns first four columns are going to be unique here okay so i'm just verifying if there are any other blank values there are no blank values but it's still showing blank that's some uh, sort of error uh, it, it will vanish if we just refresh the preview that's it so now I'm going to apply group by on first four columns use some function on top of nodes nodes is actually the text value but still we are going to apply some function on top of node that gives you error now go to the power query formula editor and modify this formula as text.combine instead of list.sum it should be text.combine and 
give a delimiter or separator here. So I am going to use the semicolon and space as a separator. Now after applying this let me just type enter and what you can see here is the magic. All So each movie has just one entry now and all the award information are all appended. Just remove errors and then you can get rid of that. Actually we were not having any errors but it's all due to the uh, preview. I mean uh, power query is not refreshed. I mean the preview has not been refreshed. So if you click on any one cell you can see all four, four awards of Roja are appended under one single cell itself. So that's how we group by all of them. Now I am going to disable load for the individual tables. We don't need the individual tables to be loaded into the data model anymore. So disable the load for individual tables and group them all together and move to a new group called do not load because we don't need these tables and we need the only final table that is album then press close and apply. So that sums up all the movies in list of ARMR. Now we are going to import the next source let's say add jingles that opens up the pop-up and then just click on the sheet and then press transform data that takes you to the power query editor as usual. Now click on the year and title so I'm just going to fill down I'm just going to get the null values replaced by the previous values. You need to be careful with this okay, because it can't be applied all the time but that's okay. Wherever required we can just apply that and then rename the query uh, close and apply that takes you to the main page. In this section we are going to play around with the text values in Power Query Editor. So I am going to import a file called albums. <coughs> so this opens the pop-up again. Now click on the information and then click OK. That takes you to the Power Query Editor. Now give an appropriate name for this table. I am naming this as independent albums. So I have null values down. I can, I think, uh, now I am just getting the null values filtered out. I am not filling them down because I need, I already have, I am just going to take the distinct values of details. So th I find like this is fine. I, do, I, not always, that's what I mentioned. Not always you have to fill them down. Instead you can filter them also if required. It's purely based on the requirement. Now I'm trying to import the next source. So this is about ARMR as a singer. So you can see uh, almost five columns here as well. I have uh, null values around film titles. Here I'm going to fill this down because I'm uh, in, in a single movie he can sing multiple songs. So we have to count every song. Okay, I'm not going to count at the movie level whereas I'm going to count at the songs level. So language also I can fill them down. I think that, that sums up more or less. Now our final KPI is just going to be the number of songs sang by ARM and which can be taken from the song title itself. So that gives you the data. Now let's try to import the new source and this source is around sales. Okay, so now I'm opening the sales sheet and importing the data from sales sheet. Right. So here you can see few challenges because the year value is marked as a text and it's not marked as a number. So that the reason is you have few text values. Okay, if you look into the 1993, one entry for 1993 and 1999, they are like text with a slash at the end. So that 
makes Power Query to assume this as a text column and not the number. Now we have to get rid of this information. I'm going to uh, so let's go to transform tab and then you have this extract characters. I'm going to extract the first four characters. We always know that here contains just four characters and that gives you the text and I can change this text to the whole number or yeah. So that that gives you the final data. Now you have soundtrack album also there as well you have few uh, null values we can just fill them down same we can apply for the sales value also that gives you the final table of this so actually you can see couple of entries for Bombay we can actually clean that up as well now before we apply this we forgot one important thing that's to name the tables with the appropriate names quickly name the tables with appropriate names and then we can just go ahead and close the power query editor to load this information into the data model perfect meet you in next section so now we are going to play around the custom columns in power query now i am opening the new source or oh, I'm importing the new source now that is soundtracks so you this information will help us to get the number of dubbed movies of error man so here again um, give a appropriate name like dubbing count or something like that okay then click on here and go to transform and then fill down so that cleans up all the null values now go to dubbed releases i am going to remove all the null values because i am my focus is only on the items that has dubbed movies so i am not going to bother about the other movies go to add column now we are going to add a custom column and the logic that we are going to use here is count the number of commas within that dubbed movies column so how to count the number of commas we'll show you use this formula text dot position of any so this formula returns the positions of the commas within the text so text of position of any of double releases column insert for comma and then we have to pass the comma as a list we have used the braces around the comma that's because it expects a list value here just click on ok just see what comes out it gives a list and this list contains three numbers these three numbers are nothing but the positions of comma in the previous column now we are going to count the number of items in this list so it formalize list dot count so that gives you the value as 3 then we need to add 1 because we have 4 movies Roja is dubbed in 4 movie, movies as 4 languages Telugu, Malayalam, Hindi and Marathi so that's that's the logic behind this so I hope you would have understood the custom columns also now let us load this as well into the data model to finalize our data model now let's jump into visualization <laughs> video we are going to see how to create a DAX measures table so to do that first I am going to create a simple measure this measure is to count the number of movies so I am just going to use the simple count function movie count equal to count of album film yeah so once this is done you could see this measure getting created inside the existing albums table and I am going to validate this with the help of card visual so use a card visual and then apply this 
tax measure to that yeah i could see the value so this measure works fine now i'm going to create a simple table go to home and then you see this option enter data just click on that that opens a pop-up to create a table i'm going to name this as hash measures i don't need this column so i'm not going to make any changes to the column just load this so once you load this you will be able to see a table called hash measures with a simple column inside that now go to the data model view and click on the measure that we have created and change the home table to hash measures that moves the measure to this measures table and then now delete the existing column so that converts your normal table into a simple measures table you could see the change in icon as well now we can put all our measures inside this let's write the dax measures to calculate the number of awards won by airman so i'm going to take one sample data that's going to be roja we all know that roja has won him national award on his first movie so let's look into the data how exactly it looks like if you look into the notes section it contains the information about national award details and all the awards are actually um, separated by semicolon de delimiter so let's start writing a new DAX measure for that national awards one calculate so we are going to count the number of albums or films that has one so we are going to apply the filter filter should be on top of this albums table and filter criteria should be on top of the note section so contain string this notes okay so within within text should be the notes column and find text should be national awards or oh, sorry national film awards what okay so that tells us how many national awards won by arm so we can test this by using the code and then apply uh, this measure to the code so that shows six national awards let's go here so that shows the note section let's just clear the filters go back to note section and then let's try by typing nominated so this contains the list of nominations so apart from the one awards that he has won he might have been nominated for multiple awards i am going to pick one specific movie that is 127 hours because air Raymond was nominated for 127 hours after the slumdog millionaire uh, just look into the text message so that contains the nomination message nominated for um, BAFTA or nomination for Academy Awards nomination for Glo Golden Globe etc so now go ahead and start writing the new measure just let's create a new measure and start writing I'm just going to rename things Golden Globe nominated so here the text criteria alone has to be modified instead of national award okay it should be golden nominated for golden globe so let, let's type that search string nominated golden globe so that gives us how many golden globes has been nominated for so i'm changing this type to multi cards and then okay let's go back to the table 
let's see if we have written the right string there seems to be a slight change so the best way to do that is we can actually copy this information put it in a notepad copy then put this in a notepad and then let's copy the search string nominated golden globe award right so let's paste this that's more or less same the slight space changes or something now i can see the value perfect so when dax measure doesn't work or with the search string the, go for this option if you know the sample set just copy the data and put it there now we are going to use the same pattern and we are going to create all the measures for multiple awards we'll show that in the next section okay so now we have created simple dax measure for all the conditions you can see multiple dax measures under the measures table so we have one condition for nomination and one condition for the awards that i want so i i could i'm just showing you the condition that i have written for bafta same way we have condition for academy awards we have condition for film fair we have condition for golden globe video will tell you why to use powerpoint to design our backgrounds so why powerpoint for formatting we can format all the shapes colors color gradients 3d formatting background etc much better in powerpoint and also object handling so when i say object handling grouping the objects and then moving the groups together and then alignment of the groups everything can be done much better in powerpoint and then ec controls so we find more formatting controls in powerpoint in order to format all the objects colors etc and you can create reusable templates in powerpoint <clears throat> so the files that we save as csvg using powerpoint can be used across multiple projects and when you are in an organization you can go for the organization level um, standards so that's the reason we mostly suggest powerpoint for the background formatting uh, for power bi so i will show you how to do that so with this example so i already have a file for me i'm just going to form i will tell you how i have formatted the background the color that i have used is the microsoft palette color for 2022 and so that you could see the gradient so i have set slight uh, gradient fill only but it doesn't look Uh, so out now just open the power bi file i also have all this uh, labels okay these are just the uh, simple shapes simple rectangle shapes paired up with icons and other uh, labels so we have created three labels inside each for award name one and nominated let me open the project now we'll show you how to use this background powerpoint uh, background into power bi project so now go to powerpoint save us i am just going to save this file but not as a powerpoint format i am going to save this file in svg format scale scalable vector graphics save this so i'm just going to save that slide alone now go to power bi okay i'm just going to show you this is already the existing one i'm going to show you how to do this from the scratch create a new canvas now go to format of the canvas you can if format is not there you go to view option and then enable format so that gives you format option now click on canvas settings I change this normally I go for 1080 resolution so go to custom this 16 by 9 is 720 pixel resolution click on custom and then you can change the resolution for the canvas it should be changed to 
and then width should be 1920 so that's the full hd resolution normally i prefer to go for full hd resolution because now most of the monitors are all full hd or even 4k monitors right so after this just you see this option so we have already exported the file into the svg format all we have to do is we have to go back to power bi just click on the canvas background Let, let's click on canvas background and then image select the svg image that we have saved so once you select this this may not fit okay so you can't see the image that's because transparency is 100 percentage just change the transparency to zero or five okay so it's three percentage and then you can see but still this is not fitting into my canvas i change the fit to image fit to fit or even fill so when you keep normal that doesn't fit into my canvas either you can go for either fit or fill that actually fits very well into the canvas without losing any resolution see that's the main benefit of svg files you don't lose resolutions but still you get the output that you have opted for so here you could see my background template that's with airman's cover pick and then all the uh, tiles for his awards on top academy awards bafta golden globe national awards and filmfare awards now we are going to fit in or plug in all the dax measures that we have written in previous section into these tiles we'll see you there in the next set <music>
Hmm. Same way, go for nominations also and quickly fill all the cards so that we are, will be done with all the cards on top. So here you can see Raiman has won two Academy Awards which we call as Oscar Awards also. Then BAFTA, uh, three nominations and two won. Then Golden Globe, I think it was 127 hours if I rise was not uh, it was nominated but has not won and now we are almost done with all the card visuals now let's start building the other visuals so in this case I am going to use the clustered column chart and I am going to build visual so I am going to use years in the x-axis and then y axis i'm going to use album i mean the movies i mean the film so here we are going to show the count of film or count of movies against years i'm just using the uh, height with position value so that it gets fit uh, very well into the dashboard so you can see the charts getting more see this is I instead of dragging the visuals using mouse I prefer to do it this way by changing the numbers that gives more control in power BA because moving through mouse may not be so accurate now let's change the title of this visual films by year and then change the font size font and get that aligned to the center right and then we can make slight modifications also we can slightly format this by getting your x-axis and y-axis titles also removed okay I think it's very slightly need some changes to the position now we are just going to make conditional formatting to this clustered column chart so what we are going to use based on count of flame so when count of flame is high use the dark purple and when it is low use the mild uh, pink tone or mild rose so that gives you in which years and all Raiman has done more number of movies just remove the legend we don't need the legend and here you can see um, almost except uh, some seven eight years or so he has done less than five movies only okay and we can slightly make adjustments to the data label position also so that it is uh, much better you can also change the horizontal or vertical orientation of the data labels wherever required uh, let's go with the horizontal orientation of the data labels I think so that's about this formatting so now we are going to create our next visual we are going to use the tree map and here ok so just don't click on the visual instead uh, select a new I mean click outside and select a tree map category we are going to use language as a category and then values I'll be using movies so movie val uh, movies versus this just make changes to the size of the visual as we have seen before and slightly increase the space required okay so I have all this max going behind the size calculation so that all the visual should be having similar uh, height and then uh, width of a specific ratio so I have made some changes now to this so that it looks very much closer to the okay done we are done with the alignment let's slightly make changes to other parts as well like title of the visual and get it aligned in the center if you want to change colors of each segment also you can go ahead and change the color 
here I'm just going to go, uh, go with the default colors that were selected okay so now we are going to build a heat map so in order to build a heat map you need to go ahead for the pivot table so I am just going ahead for pivot table in columns I am using languages and sorry in rows I have used language and in columns I have used years and values should be count of movies so here we are going to analyze in which all year Raiman has made more number of movies through a heat map so we have almost done the similar thing on top using films by year same way but now we are going to do this using language also so in which language he has done more number of movies per year and make slight changes to the size and position as we used to do before so that it gets a better fitment into this dashboard so i am quickly making all those changes horizontal position and vertical position right right so yeah we can even slightly reduce the vertical position i think 484 value right so we are done with the position but now we need to have conditional formatting to produce the heat map of this visual let's go back and remove blanks from filters we don't need the blank language there could be some data quality issues which we are addressing through this we can add the title movies by languages yeah I'm just changing the font to aerial and then center alignment bull perfect now let's take it to the next step yeah we can go to the cell elements okay so with that you see something called cell elements just expand that and you would be able to see something called background color enable that that gives you the background color and now we are going to apply colors based on our heat map I, I have the color coding already for heat map so it ranges from red to yellow indicating the most number of movies to least number of movies so just copy the colors and then paste them done and once we are done with this we would be able to see a beautiful heat map generated for our requirement let's work on our next visual that's going to be bar chart yeah cluster bar chart and here we are going to consider the number of movies or languages that Raiman has uh, worked as a singer number of songs he has actually sung across different languages and so it's very straightforward just put language versus sing songs okay that he has worked on and then as usual let's make changes to the height width and position of the visual so that that gets a better fitment into this dashboard slightly so fit that adjacent to the heat map till the end so i have the numbers already i'm just going to use my existing numbers so that i can put this on right place and after that i'm just going to make changes to the title and other format format title formatting of this visual as we used to do for all the other visuals straightforward changes yeah then we'll meet you in the next visual now we have all the visuals in either bars or stacks we need some visual that gives you the table representation of what we are actually looking for that gives you numbers okay the exact numbers 
something like heat map but instead again we are going for the pivot and we are going to use films in the rows normally see we here we are going to analyze them based on the film so when i select a year i should be getting the list of movies that were worked by raiman on that particular year then films language and ag again under values you need to have just the count okay count of the movies you can go ahead and change the aggregation type as count that gives you the value now after this it's straightforward just go ahead and make changes to the size of this visual it is so this visual i'm going to um, fit that very much in line with the first clustered bar chart making changes to the visual with numbers i mean and after that i just add the title as usual i will i will tell you so when we put them all together and i will show you how exactly this visual is going to be very useful while we analyze the data after applying the slices we'll be showing that in the upcoming sections so put that here that's it slightly move this and then get this in line with the top visual so it's almost in line with the top visual now we can move to the next visual okay so we are done with the other visuals and now i am going for the funnel visual in funnel i am going to show you the sales records so we are going to analyze the top 10 sale album and category i am just going to use album as my category and values would be it is i mean my system is a bit slow it is taking a little more time to load than usual yeah i think yeah now it, it is loaded now let after this let's go back and then load the values values would be sales values so we are going to analyze the sales based on the albums so you could see a funnel now let me maximize this and show you you could see a funnel starting from the topmost sale album to the least sale album this data is not complete because we don't have much data after 2000s but just going ahead with what we have and i'm going to just restrict this to top 10 sale albums I'm, i don't need a big funnel so in filter section use top 10 and then i have written top 10 and based on by value it should be based on the sale values sale just select sale and apply filter so once you apply filter then you could see this 10 items in this top 10 album so starting from bombay to sadia yeah and now go ahead and do slight formatting changes then it is very simple i, I just i'm going to <laughs> i'm going to remove the conversion range we don't need this conversion rate yeah normally this conversion rate is required when you want to analyze one item with the other but in this case we don't need and then now as usual make changes to the size and position of this visual and then get that fit next to the pivot table that we have already So it's very straightforward. I'm just going to speed it up so that we can catch up after this. We have some interesting sections after this. After this, we'll be applying the slices and then we are going to have some interesting sections. I'm going to speed it up.
okay so now we are coming to important section that is to use the slicers because slicers are most integral part of data analysis that's filters okay so i am going to use some filters like year language and director so director with whom airman has worked on uh, so here i have uh, my criteria again my system is slow it's taking bit while to get the data loaded into the slicer yeah i could see the data see now you can see the data they are just loaded in as buttons i just uh, need to format this slightly go ahead and use slightly different things i'm first thing i am changing the size width and height of this slicer so after this <coughs> get it placed to the left pane we are going to use the left pane as slicer pane then we can change the font size of the font <coughs> right now the slicer headers are not visible but we are going to make changes to the format of this slicer and we are going to get the get it visible so first of all we need the slicer to be as a drop down box okay so in order to get that let's go to slicer selections or slicer settings change this between two drop down so here we have this drop down option select that and that gets you a proper drop down box and after that in selection just remove this multi select with control and enable select all so that helps you to show multi select with control and then select all also if i uh, drop yeah you would be able to see the options so when i select 1992 that's the year on which rahman has done his first movie you could see rahman has got two movies one malayalam and one tamil movie uh, in the below table we have the names as well roja is the tamil movie and yoda is the malayalam movie okay so this is working fine and we are going to create two more slices similar to this welcome you all to this last section of this video so i have created two more slices for language and director also and now let's go ahead and do the data analysis now i am going to select director maniratnam for air raman and let's see how many movies they have worked together Raiman has worked 14 Tamil movies with Maniratnam and 4 Hindi movies. That includes only the direct Hindi movies and not the dubbed ones because Bombay is again considered as a Tamil movie here. And you can see the sales funnel is not impacted here because it doesn't contain the director information and we could see the heat map also. Only in the year 2004 we have two movies and in all the other years we just have very less number of movies okay just one movie now let's remove this and go ahead and analyze the data using language i am going to select okay again my machine is little slow let's wait for this yeah now i am going to select hindi so you can see something here when i select hindi Academy Awards, BAFTA, and Golden Globe all went blank on top. So Raiman has done sixty Hindi movies so far, and mostly, I mean, the years two thousand four, two thousand eight, and twenty one, he has done four Hindi movies. That seems to be huge. So the list is available below. Here we get the list as well. So on top. we could see values only for national awards and film fair because hindi movies has done uh, has value for national award and film fair as a singer he has sung more than 40 plus hindi songs and let's select english so when i select english i would be able to see no values for national awards and film fair awards 
whereas we should get the values for academy bafta and golden globe okay so now the english movies are loaded has done 15 english movies uh, at least i am aware of few of them we could see two academy awards that's for slum dog bafta golden globe and then 127 hours was nominated later on and we can see the airways distribution of those movies okay so at least i am aware of few of them uh, couples retreat then uh, pile lemask slum dog millionaire then 100 foot journey so at least i am aware of uh, these movies 127 hours yeah we have one nice song called if i rise right now if we don't want uh, the slices to be used we also have another method let me remove this filter selection and let's go back to the complete selection view <coughs> now you have the tree map right so in tree map you could see the sections uh, by selecting one section now i am just selecting tamil raman has done direct 86 tamil movies just by selecting tamil we can see the values getting filtered only for tamil and all the others so in top cards okay all the others went blank raiman has won four national awards for tamil movies and then 26 filmfare awards with 34 nominations and you can see raiman has done huge number of tamil movies in the year 1999 94 etc that's seven tamil movies okay I, I think if you look into his discography 1999 was one of the most prolific years so i hope you are enjoying the data analysis so i thoroughly enjoyed the data analysis of arm's discography we can build more with this data so hope to see you all in the next video thanks for staying connected